Hello everyone. Good evening everyone. Thank you for logging in and coming on. So I am not alone. I'll be joined in a second by maybe more than one person. Who knows? Um, but I'm Canel for those that don't know me. And tonight is the art of Thanksgiving. I believe this is episode 10. Uh, but let's do a quick catch up for episode 9 of last week, which was Worship Is, led by Charlotte all the way from Dubai. She had some help by a friend called Vida, who is a worship leader in Dubai. And she was also joined on screen live by Tanya and Jade. So, since I'm doing the tech on my own at the moment, so please bear with me even if it's not all smooth. Hello, good evening, everybody. What's up? <laughs> what are you doing? We have to say it. Me and Jade have been so high, but <laughs> and I do not know why. I know why. What is it? Today? Canal's cake. Canal's cake. Today we are talking about worship. Worship is is, is almost every or is everything. Mm -hmm. It's what we're created to do. We have to become ready mm -hmm. for when all we will do is worship. Ah, when we go into the heavenly realm. Here with my friend Fida. Hello. Just to caveat before we begin, we are in Dubai. We aren't breaking the rules on lockdown in the UK. So we've known each other probably for about five years now, six years. Yeah. We've served together in the youth ministry, um, and then I've watched Vida go from being a part of the praise and worship team in the youth ministry to then leading um, praise and worship. When I got saved and I started, you know, going to church regularly, is when I was like, oh, people, you know, they sing up there. Like I, I sing, maybe I, I could sing. At the end of the day. People are always going to have an opinion, mm. especially congregations. Yeah. You know, they're um, in worship. You don't. It, it's different than the world. The world, you will say, "Wow, what an you know, what an amazing voice. She hit that note so good, and you know, your harmonies are great." But I think in the church, common feeling where worship leaders always want to hear, "You led me into worship so well." Your ultimate goal and your ultimate aim as a worship yeah. leader yeah. is to be able to lead people into mm -hmm. the presence of God so that they can experience yeah. His goodness. You're not just rostered on a schedule. Whoever put you on team, even if they don't know it, even if they were just strategically aligning you up with like the band, they don't realize and you don't realize that it's actually because God wants you there on that day. Oh, so I'm so busy watching today. I much prefer it when someone else needs it. Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's straight to the point. You soak in the moment. You don't even have to say anything. I mean, that's the amazing thing about spending time with God. You can literally not say a word. Hello, Jay. Hello. <laughs> it's a little surprise off tonight. Hi, everyone. So, Jay, can you introduce yourself? Yes, uh, my name is Jay. I am uh, one of the worship leaders at Bright City. Um, yeah, and good friends with Canal. Very good friends. <laughs> uh, we'll all join by Joel as well. <laughs> I forgot something at home that is important for tonight. Um, so he's gently gone back home to get it for me, uh, but he'll be back in a sec. So. Don't worry, he'll be there as what well. What a guy. What a guy, to honestly. The <laughs> um, so yeah, Jay, interesting thing. Um, Jay, being the worship leader of Fright City, do you have any like input from last week? What did you think of the topic? Because obviously it was all about worship. Oh yeah, I mean, it's so it's so close to, to my heart and mm. I, I loved it and it was great. And I especially love the segment where we talked about, uh, we had different people come on and say, worship is to me. And of course, worship is not, um, it's not a song, it's not a piece of music, it's not a dance, it's, um, it's, an, it's, it's those things incorporating worship, because they are expressions of worship. Worship is, um, I said it's surrender, because to me, worship, that's what, what it is. It's, yeah. it's giving everything that you have to Jesus and center, surrendering it all to him. And I think of Romans 12, 1, when I think of that, um, about uh, uh, giving your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to the mm. Lord. This is your true act of worship. And for me, that's that's what worship is. And uh, so I'm thankful for the arts because they give us um, a way to express our worship to God uh, when words fail. Yeah. yeah and, and, it's, and, and it's a beautiful way. And it's a way of us connecting our emotions to mm. him and our emotions of themselves are a gift from God. And so, yeah, that that's what worship is to me, basically. Wow, thank you, Jay, for your input. Yeah. I believe the man has come back. Right. <laughs> the man is back. Let's just have a look at the comments. 
A lot of people are saying, hi, Jay. You're very popular, Jay. Hello. <laughs> Love you. So, yeah, by the time that Joel comes on, I'm just going to say last week for me, I thought it was a really good, really good input that they, they shared with us. Uh, what was interesting was that um, even Tanya and Jay are part of the worship and they've done that for years. So it was really good to have us there. Oh, yeah. You know, their insights from yeah. there, and they couldn't stop um, singing as well. Oh, yeah, it's just such a rich subject. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I bet exactly. they could have gone on for a long time. Definitely, and you can definitely tell as well when people leave worship themselves, not just, oh, I'm a good singer, I'm a good mm. um, musician, but when they are worshippers themselves, yeah. and, and they leave these, like, when I see Jay, she's constantly, you can you can tell she just, like, sweats worship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've never had it put that way before. I think that's a very French uh, phrase and doesn't oh, translate it? well in English. But <laughs> yeah, I mean, every like worship just comes it out. Flows you. out. Yeah, it flows yeah. out. Yeah. Like you're constantly yeah. singing, constantly, you know, talking about your new discoveries. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think it's very important that to realize that people that you might see yourself on the stage are people that are worshippers in their own time, in their private time. Oh yeah, yeah. And um, and that's something that everyone can do. It's not because you're not the person on stage, you're not the person yes. leading, that you cannot live this worship lifestyle. Yeah. And that's something that everyone, it's like, it's, it's what we're made of, it's what yeah. we're made for. I totally agree. I mean, you, just because I have a platform, because mm -hmm. God, God's put me there, and I'm really thankful for that platform. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, gra I'm grateful for the gift, and I'm grateful for the anointing, and I don't take those things for granted. But my access to God, my access to the throne, is no more greater than anybody else's access to Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, access to the Father. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm, I'm grateful that I get to facilitate and help people reach to that place. Mm -hmm. But, but just because I'm up there doesn't mean that I. I'm closer to him than you could ever be. Yeah. You know, the access is always uh, for those who want it. So it's yeah. very important. I think that's a very good point. What about you, Joe? What did you take up? Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm trying to play catch up. <laughs> it's all right. We've, we've just um, watched a recap video. Um, so I was just asking Jay what she thought about last week, if she has any input from a worship leader perspective. So you're no worship leader, but you were. You have music in your life. You're a musician, like you. You do music. Um, is worship something that you you do consistently? What's your relationship with worship? Yeah, good question. <laughs> I I don't. I wouldn't say my relationship with worship is typical. As in, like I think when you say worship, we tend to understand a certain thing. As yeah. in, certain kinds of music and singing. Mm -hmm. um, it's not that I never do it, but that's not really my expression go to yeah, yeah, yeah. that's I, and i like the way you say that because i think mm. i've always been searching for that word mm. but yeah i guess that's just not mm. my way of expression expressing worship most naturally mm -hmm. um yeah i mean for anyone that knows that the music i do i say that's the way that i try and express worship and it's it happens to be music but for me it's more like the writing process it's the words i find a lot of value in words and that helps mm. me like really worship in that way and i think i guess for me it's about the integrity behind it so even the music i do it's more about just it's not that i have to make sure i say jesus every third line of a song or something <laughs> but just that it reflects my relationship with mm -hmm. god and then i feel that's worship to me yeah um, and i definitely something that jumped out for me in the catch-up video um was actually the point that jade made and jade was saying about how it's almost preparation for when we'll be in heaven mm. yeah. worshiping God 24-7 yeah, like yeah. and that really sort of reminded me that oh yeah that is I guess not just the amazing thing about worship but the benefit of having yeah. a worship mm -hmm. heart and it reminded me of something I heard ages back where someone was saying if you don't feel comfortable or if it doesn't come to you to want to thank God and praise him a lot and uh, are you sure you're ready for heaven Mm -hmm. Just because yeah. when you actually read what heaven is, it's not, it's not like going about with your, with all your jewelry and a million cars. Walking around in your mansion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like it's people are just worshiping God twenty four seven. Yeah. Mm. that's ultimately what it says heaven yeah. is. Yeah. So if you don't take any pleasure in that, then I'm not saying you're not going to heaven. It's just you're going to struggle. It's, it's going to be a culture yeah. shock, isn't it? Inside, <laughs> yeah. <a> culture shock. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think it's it's so important, and obviously everyone has different 
styles of worship, different expression, like Joel said, uh, for him it's words. I know people that for them it's art, yeah, painting. Yeah. Is an so there's different ways. And what's really good uh, with linking it to tonight is that um, we're going to go through another way of express expressing worship as well. Um, so the topic tonight is the art of Thanksgiving. Uh, so we're not going to talk about the American celebration, as I believe it's tomorrow. Um, but just so it's a, it's a good thing to talk about because it's something that um, we, we see all over the Bible, something that a lot of people in the Bible have expressed gratitude and thanksgiving. But what does it actually mean? What does it mean to give thanks? What does it mean to have a grateful heart? Mm. So these are the things we're going to see tonight. And you'll see um, as we, we will talk along that it's really linked to worship and praise as well. So to start, I have a little quiz, actually three quizzes, and we've got prizes, Joel, if you may. Thank you. Ooh. So I've got prizes for you guys. I don't know if you've heard of those notebooks. Um, they are called One Line a Day Notebooks. As you can see, there's three prizes. Um, so for three winners among you, hopefully you will win. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and you even have a little unsubscribe card to go with it. Um, so these notebooks, I've got one at home and I use it every day. Basically, I don't know if you can see, they have the date and they have five entries for five years. The good thing about it, I use it every evening and I just write down things about my day. I write down something I'm grateful for, um, if prayers have been answered, if I'm doing some specific prayers, uh, if there's a specific event that happened on the day. And what I really want it to be for the people that will win this is that this can be a great gratefulness a Thanksgiving notebook. And that for the next five years, I know it sounds like a big commitment, but for the next five years, every night or in the morning, if you prefer, when you go to bed, um, you can write a little a little note. It doesn't even have to be a lot, but one thing that you're grateful for for that day, just have that habit um, of giving thanks and being grateful. And you see, it sounds like such a small thing, but anyone that's tried that, you'll see that it just becomes like a part of their lifestyle. Mm. I mean, if, you, if it's something you struggle with, the more you'll do it, the less you will struggle with. If it's something that's already good nature for you, it's just good to keep improving, isn't it? So here is the first prize. This is lovely notebook. We've got some fans of the idea there as well, Paula and Simeon. I know Simeon. I think Simeon does something like that as well. I've heard Simeon before saying this. Um, so for you to guess, it's either a story or a character of the Bible. They are in the New Testament. This one is very easy. They wrote a few letters and they often end their letters with thanksgiving to the people or to the church and to God. So if you have the answer, just write it down. I think there's a few minutes of delays. Yeah, seconds. I've got it on my phone as well. We'll go with the first person I see <laughs> <laughs> from either from either one. All right, I repeat. They are in the New Testament. They wrote a few letters. Yes. We've got a correct answer. Charlene, you gave the right answer. Charlene, straight in there with Paul. It is Paul. Paul the Great Paul. Paul the Apostle. Mm -hmm. Paul, Saul of Tars, turned into Paul. Um, I think what's really good with, with Paul is that when you read his letters, which are plentiful in the Bible, um, I just think how great it is that every letter, he's always giving thanks to the people, whether it's to specific people that are following him, uh, like Timothy, or the church that he's writing to, and he will say, I thank you for the gifts that you have given me, or for uh, a specific character that they are. He's giving thanks to God, and he always ends it as in giving thanks and praying for them and leaving them, you know, in peace. And even when his letters sometimes are not, you know, so soft because he needs to say truth and he needs to say things that may be hard to hear, but he doesn't stop there. It's not because he's saying these things that he's not grateful for those people. So I think 
if there is one thing to take away from him is to be a bit more like him and to be more encouraging to people, to give more thanks to people, to acknowledge the things that people do for us. Mm. And same way for God, to acknowledge what God does through people, through other people, through us, and just constantly have this hurt of, of thanksgiving, this hurt of, of gratefulness. Mm. I think it's great. When he writes to people and he says, every day I give thanks for mm. you, um, I give thanks to God for you. If I receive that letter, that will tell me two things about him. One, that he loves God and he's thankful to God. Yeah. Two, that he appreciates me and he loves me. Mm. I mean, what a high compliment to say, every day I thank God for you. Yeah. Yeah. Such a high compliment. Big yeah. time. And funnily enough, I remember the first church I, I ever went to back, mm. this was like back in Brighton and there was a thing they did once where they were doing like, um, I don't know how to describe it, but like they were helping us to go through the Bible, like in teaching us how to pray. So it was like for sort of new believers and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And one of the things they were saying was like, pick, pick a book. So we went to Philipp- Philippians and they said, just pick maybe like a, the first few lines, pray about it and see what jumps out to you. Mm-hmm. And even if it doesn't seem like it's the most impactful part of that, of that sort of chapter, um, just trust that God has something to say for you. And Philippians chapter one, verse three, if memory serves well, it's just a bit where Paul's like giving thanks and he just says like, um, I thank my God every time I think of you or something like that. Mm. And that was jumping out to me and I was thinking, oh, why this? This is a rubbish yeah. one. I can't <laughs> share this. But yeah. when I was actually praying and thinking, yeah, what is it, God, you want? It really made me think, actually, I want to be known as someone like that. You know, like mm. Paul was saying, like, oh, every time I think of you, I give thanks to God. And I was thinking, yeah, that is how... I want to be like when people think of Joel they think yeah I just want to thank God because Mm. of the life he leads or what he's reflecting in his life and that was a really significant bit and again I think it's not just being thankful is good for yourself like sometimes Mm. being thankful for others it encourages them even to sort of up their game and want to live out in a more faithful way. Yeah, no, that's very interesting. I think it's it's good to have an encouraging heart. When you when you know someone that is constantly encouraging, it just really impacts you, isn't it? Mm. You just constantly feel better after leaving them. You just feel more peaceful. And things that could bring you down, they, they have a way to just uplift you. And I think it's very important to us to strive to be a bit more a bit more like that. So, Charlene, well done. Well From what done. I've seen in the comments, first time watching live. And you're already winning. I mean, great for you. She so. may come back. <laughs> yeah. She's saying that her first entry in the, in the diary is going to be the win. <laughs> <laughs> well, great one. So you're winning this one. Um, if you guys don't happen to win tonight, don't worry. These notebooks are available online everywhere. And I think it's just really good to just get one and try to get in the habit of writing things down. All right, get ready for the second, the second quiz. They are an Old Testament character and they are famous for bearing a remarkable son. They trusted the Lord and the Lord rewarded them because he's faithful. They wrote a prayer of praise after God gave her a son that she dedicated to God and the temple as a priest even before they could become pregnant. So I think that last bit is a yeah, good clue. Yeah, give away. Yeah. <laughs> you keep your eye on that one, I'll keep my eye on the phone. Another clue is that her husband is called Elkanah and her son is called Samuel. Any idea? No, it's not Miriam. No, not Miriam. So the son is Samuel, the husband is Elkanah, and the husband had another another wife and Charlene, you cannot win twice rachel <laughs> well done rachel rachel won it's hannah hannah indeed hannah the mother of samuel samuel that obviously great man that we all know uh he's got two chapters so that story that i've just said is in one samuel chapter one and two um just to give a bit of context for those that don't know the story hannah is the wife of elkanah and elkanah has another wife as well called Penina and Penina has children and she always uh, makes fun of Hannah because Hannah is barren uh, but Hannah every year they go to the temple and Hannah that one year she makes this dedication 
to God and she says, God, if you give me a son next year, I will dedicate my son to you. He will be raised in the temple. I mean, what a prayer. Like, you, you can't have children and then mm. you're praying to have one that you will give away to the yeah, Lord. Yeah. And then the Lord rewards her with a son and because he knew her hurt behind that prayer. And when she gets pregnant, she doesn't forget what she prayed to the God. And she dedicates Samuel to the Lord and she brings him to the temple and she just when she finds out she's pregnant and all that she just gives this worship this praise mm. to God that we can find in 1 Samuel 2 where she just thank God for for the marvels that he's done in her life for the fact that she's pregnant and I just think it's such a such a great thing a lot of time we pray for things and either we forget and we, mm. we just get on with our life and, oh I'm glad or we brush it over like we just take it for granted but I just think what if we would be just like Hannah and just pose and take the time to thank God with praise and worship? And she's actually not the only one in the Bible to worship God, to give thanks. There's a lot of people, a lot of example that when God has done something for them, their way to express it is through praise and worship. In Psalms, you can see it a lot. Mm -hmm. You can see it in lots of different um, times in the Bible, which I think is, is quite an interesting thing, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Is that something that, that you, you've seen as well, like people giving worship? Well, I think most worship songs are songs of gratitude. I mean, mm. you don't have to say thank you in a song to show that you're uh, thankful that you, mm. that you have gratitude. Uh, say, for instance, Bethel's goodness of God. You know, yeah. no, I don't think that she says in one line, does she say, I'm thankful, thank you, mm. you know, I'm grateful. I don't think she says that at all, but it's just... It proves through the song, it's just proving that she is thankful because she's she's recognising all that he's done for her, yeah. all the blessings she's received, and she's reflecting that back to him and saying how much she loves him and how good she, good he is, mm. you know, so, yeah. yeah. No, it's good. It's a good thing to always try to get back to, to God and, and not forget what he's done, not forget that we've prayed for something, and even if we've not prayed, mm. but God has given us something, he's blessed us, just go back to him and just thank him and praise him and worship him and and worship is something that can be public as well um we've got this this writing of of hannah and that's something that we can take away and like jade jay sorry <laughs> just said uh, there's lots of worship songs as well so i think it's a good thing to to just like express in worship because sometimes we don't have the words but just to be like <gasps> just worship it and sometimes it can even be that there's a song, a particular song that just will express it better than you. Mm. And that's just a, something you can bring as an offering to God. Mm. So Rachel, you've got this lovely notebook. Third one. There's still a third. Wow, I'm shocked because a, a lot of people did come through finally with the right answer. But we had to go with who we saw first, which was Rachel. But we had Mary, Paula, mm. Jimmy, finally all had the right answer. Well done, guys. So now's your chance to shine to get this final Kind of the pressure ben. is on. Come on, Ben. <laughs> is this the hardest? <laughs> Get me a present. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, because now Jay can't, can't win anything. Um, so there were ten of them, and only one came back. The story is found in Luke seventeen verses eleven to nineteen. This specific character, the one that came back, is the only one that came back to give thanks to to Jesus and the reason why he gave thanks to Jesus is because Jesus healed them the ten of them I think now we're we looking for a name or we're looking for not a name because this the, this person is not named but it's the story yes Paula the lepers uh -huh. that's it Paula won so we were looking for <laughs> the leper managed to answer <laughs> Sorry, Ben. Sorry, Jay. <laughs> it's fine. Paula won. I, bet, I, knew, I knew she'd really want one. So. Yeah. Well done, Paula. I'm happy for you. See, we're happy for you. See, oh yeah. <laughs> ben is writing from your phone, Jay. This will be a, maybe tricking people out. Jay is here. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this story um, is Jesus that says this story. And what I think for me is really important is that nine of them actually forgot. And, and it's like they forgot Jesus and they forgot what happened or they took it for granted. I don't know, because it's not really specified the reason why they didn't come back. But I think a lot of time, that's what we do. We get we get something from God and we've asked, because at the beginning of the story, they see Jesus and they're Jesus, Jesus, master, heal us. 
and Jesus sends them to the priest to heal them. And it's like, that didn't happen. They get healed and, oh, just get on with my day. Mm. And this one came back. And the Bible says that this one was a foreigner. He wasn't a Jew. He didn't know, he probably didn't even know Jesus, but he came back. And I think that's what we I see a lot of time. Do us Christians, we just take things for granted. I'm not saying always, but mm -hmm. a lot of time we just take things for granted because we're used to it. We're used to the miracles. We're yeah. used to the healing. But then you get that one outsider or the new Christian or the foreigner mm -hmm. and something happens to them. And they, oh, you see the excitement in their eyes and you see like the, the burn within them. And I always find it intriguing that why are we not like that after 10 years of being Christian? Yeah, yeah. Well, we should be even more and more and more amazed at yeah. what God has done. Um, so my takeaway for you from that story is just don't forget what God, don't forget what Jesus does for you and go back to him and give him the things that he deserves. And don't be like the other nine. Don't just go on with your day. Just come back to him and, and give him the honor that, that Jesus mm -hmm. deserves because he's the one that at the end of the day that's done that thing for you. And it's not something to take for granted. Mm -hmm. So, Paula, well done. Well done, you three. Yeah. The quiz is over, but the notebooks are available online. So I would really encourage everyone to just go and get one or make one yourself and really get into the habit of, of giving things and writing down all of these things that you are grateful for. Mm. That and God we've already got the, the details of the free winners, haven't we? So we'll be in yep. touch yep. and we'll organise to get that delivered or sent to you. Definitely. Yeah. Or you can buy them as a Christmas presents mm -hmm. and then they yes. can write in the book that they're grateful for their present from you. Yeah. That's a great one. Benedict. That's a great one. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that then? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Guys, what what do you think that being grateful means? We've got a video coming up in a sec, but I'm really curious to know if you have any any Thanksgiving to give right now on on life do you have anything that you're thankful for oh so much <laughs> so much I, I, this is just such an obvious thing you just know i'm gonna say it but it, it's ben aldis oh he's just he's just he's just such an amazing kind generous guy and he works so incredibly hard you know and he always goes the extra mile for his family and for all the nagging that i do as a wife and i were guilty of it i'm sorry <laughs> but um just all that he does for us makes up for everything that he may not accomplish you like maybe forgetting to help with housework which is doesn't really matter in the long run you know he's just an amazing husband and i'm really thankful for him and of course my family you know mm. my, my, my children and i say my three children because we have a a 19 year old that i never asked for but i got anyway <laughs> who i'm thankful for as well her so, name shall not be be named you can be named everyone she's Vicky. in the comments Vicky, yeah, she's in the comments but yeah, I think relationships are the most, uh, apart from the gift of salvation, mm -hmm. you know, the gift of what Jesus did on the cross for us, you know, our forgiveness and all that, which is the greatest gift you can ever ask for. The next level up, the next thing down for um, being thankful for has to be our relationships because mm -hmm. they're what really matter the most, mm -hmm. aren't they? Definitely. Yeah. No, I like that. And I too am very grateful for Ben. Ben has always got like lots of insights. And I think mm. as a man, I'm obviously not a man as you can see, but as a man, I just think that he's such a great example mm. for, for so many men mm. out there. He's just like the way he just provides for his family. And that's something that even I am not part of his family. I see it. And I think it's such a such an important thing nowadays. Yeah, yeah. big time. Anything you're thankful for, Joel? Yeah, I mean, after what Jay said, I would be a terrible person if I didn't say I'm thankful for my wife. Um, <laughs> but it is very it's true. <laughs> and I think anyone that knows me knows I do actually say it a lot mm, that I'm very thankful definitely. for my wife. So definitely, just not just because you're a great wife, but just the person you are and the way that I see you lead in your faith and lead in your life. And again, so, so we've only been in England, what, for three years now? I'm Coming up for yeah. four? And to just come here and just make a life from scratch and do the things you do, I think it's, it's inspirational. And I take inspiration from that as well. That, do you know what? If, if God wants you somewhere and you're obedient to the call, mm -hmm. he can make all things happen. But you had to be obedient for that to happen. So I rate you for that. And just quickly, the other thing that I've really been thinking a lot lately is 
the online broadcasts, mm. but specifically the opportunity to be involved in one, like unsubscribe. And Canel will know that basically for a while now, and I only shared it with Canel earlier this year, I'd been praying for something like this and I just had it on my heart. I was thinking, I don't know if it's like a podcast or something, but I really just want to do something. But I couldn't see the opportunity. But I just thought, if it's your will, God, I'm sure it will happen. And then long story short, out the blue, Ian gets in touch, says like, Joel, do you want to do this with this team? And it's just been amazing to be a part of it, to see how it's been received by everyone and the great things already that have come from it. And we're only on episode 10. Um, and it's just amazing. So yeah, grateful for what it's achieved, but grateful that I'm able to be a part of it as well. Yeah. Why am I grateful for? Um, I'm grateful for my husband. I have to say it now. All the praise that made me blush might be just washed away if I didn't say that. Uh, but no, I'm very grateful for Jill. I think he's um, he's a very, very good um, husband and leader and friend. The way I see him care for his friends and his family, it's not even just, just for me, but I just think when I see Jill, I'm just always like, oh, I've got so much to learn. Um, so I'm very, very grateful for him. And more specifically now, I'm grateful. It's going to sound so mundane, but I received an ice cream maker for my birthday <laughs> this weekend and have made ice cream. Well, Joel helped me. We made ice cream. Oh my gosh, it was the best ice cream ever. So I'm it's very great. grateful. Jay, Jay was involved in yeah. this present, so... <laughs> so I'm so, herself. she has to, yeah. Oh yeah, but I'm be grateful so... For I will, it will be delivered to <laughs> quite a few people, but I'm very grateful because this ice cream maker is the result of incredible friends and family that contributed to it. And I'm just very, very grateful. And now I've got like the living testament yeah. and taste <laughs> of yeah. that. Oh, that's, that's not a small thing. For my birthday, I, I got a soda stream, okay? Mm. And you know, I, I my face was like, oh, it's a soda stream. I mean, it's not <laughs> that big as it was only a soda stream, but I think, why I was so excited and grateful for it is because um, Ben actually listened. I said, mm. I wouldn't mind a bit of soda stream. <laughs> and, you know, and he thought, oh, I'll get her one. And I just wasn't, because, you know, sometimes things just go mm. over his head. Yeah. Um, but he really paid attention. And that's why it was like, oh, the soda stream. Yeah, I remember she actually texted us. Yeah. <laughs> she showed Fizzy us the water. soda stream. <laughs> oh, yeah, <love. laughs> yeah. So thank God for husbands, they get us really good kitchen mm. presence yeah yeah <laughs> so we're gonna play a video there's quite a few um of you that might be in the video i basically reached out to the church um to ask them what are they thankful for and here's the the video so have a look and in the comments i'm very interested to know if, what you're thankful for so please put it in the comments so that we can just have an idea of what you're thankful for at the moment So I'm thankful for my amazing, amazing friend, uh, most of whom I'd consider like family and those friends that give me the strength to just make it through really turbulent times and challenging times and uh, just always there for me and give me unconditional love. I'm thankful to God for my daughter-in-law is me. She's a typical example of the Proverbs 31 woman. I love her to bits. Psalm 68, 5 says that God is a father to the fatherless. Verse 6 says he puts his solitary into families. I thank him that he's done that for me and he's given me a place where I can do that for others. I want to give thanks for sunrises and sunsets. They always remind me of God's faithfulness. Just a few things that I'm grateful for. The first being freedom. The second being health, the third being friendship and family, and the last but never least, God the Father. First and foremost, I'm thankful for God, I'm thankful for my family, I'm thankful for having a very good close group of friends, and I'm thankful that I have a roof over my head and that the bills are still getting paid. I'm so thankful for my family and for the amazing privilege and honour of being a mum. It has absolutely, hands down, been the best job in the world and I'm so thankful to my amazing God for his faithfulness and loving kindness to us all. I am thankful for my family, especially my husband and my parents, because they're always looking out for me. 
they're there to support me in the difficult times and to celebrate with me in the good times. Hi, um, I am mostly grateful for our two babies um, who are fast asleep. Um, so I got to eat a mint chocolate magnum ice cream all by myself and it felt like a drip of heaven. Thank all that I live in a country where I get to experience four different seasons, the spring, the summer, the autumn and the winter. And I'm so thankful too that Jesus loves me. What am I thankful for? Um, this is just such an amazing question and I mean I'm thankful for everything in my life. I'm thankful for having a roof over my head and a home. Um, I'm thankful for having a family that loves me. I'm thankful for being a part of an amazing church who look after me. And of course I'm thankful for all the basic needs I've got and obviously for God for looking after me. Hi, so much to be thankful for. The occasional game of golf, a pre-lockdown haircut, more importantly my beautiful wife and family and faith in a hope and a future with Jesus. I am grateful for family. During this pandemic, my family has really kept me grounded. I want to thank God for, for mums. Mums are amazing. Mums love us unconditionally. Mums love us forever. They're always there. Mums always think the best. Thank you for mums. Mums, thank you, mum. I just want to say thank you to God for giving me life and salvation. And I thank you, Jesus, that you made it possible and a family and people to love. Amen. I'm thankful to the Lord for watching over my family, watching over me during this very challenging COVID-19 pandemic. I'm grateful that I'm saved. I'm grateful for um, my home, my family. I'm grateful for my husband. I'm grateful for my two little dogs. I'm grateful for my job. I'm grateful that um, God provides for us. I'm grateful for money in the bank, food on the table, clothes on my back. Um, I'm really grateful for indoor plumbing. I'm grateful for a, a comfortable bed to sleep in. Um, I'm grateful for my friends, for the church family. Um, I'm grateful that um, I can um, express myself musically in worship. Um, I'm grateful for the beauty of creation around me. I'm just grateful to be a child of God. Hi guys, um, just me saying something about that I'm thankful for. Um, well, just to have my mates around, like Canal, Joel, Ryan, John, Pete, Bex, and everyone from Active. Um, you've been amazing as always, so keep it up. Hi, I'm Karen Taylor, and I'm thankful for the people who brought me to Christ. I'm also thankful for my family, for the family I didn't think I was gonna get. Thankful for my friends who are always there for me. But most of all, I thank Jesus. I don't have to work. I, I, I have plenty of time with my wife. I will sit at home. Uh, I'm really grateful for what's happened to me over the last few years. If God was not for me, I know today I will not be alive. So I want to say thank you, God, for provision, for protection, and the blessed assurance that you will never leave me nor forsake me. Thank you. Hi, I'm Colin Taylor, and I'm thankful for two things in particular. First is for Christ, who saved a wretch like me. And second is for Karen, my wife, who means the absolute world to me. Morning, all. I'm very thankful for this lot that you can see behind me, my family, praise to God for all of them. And something else I'm very thankful for is that my wallet was returned to me on Tuesday night in very, very mysterious circumstances, haven't got time to go into it now. I hadn't even been aware that I'd lost it and a guy turned up on my drive at about eight o'clock in the evening with it and then disappeared. So very, very thankful that that was returned. So lots to be thankful for. Um, I'm thankful for my family in LA that even though I haven't been able to go back to France for over a year now because of all of the lockdown things, um, they've been here for me and they are real family for me and I'm really, really happy um, because I have the best family in there.
wow, I love watching. I mean, I've seen this video like so many times because John did the editing, but I just love it. Even seeing it again, it's just it's just so good to see how many people are thankful for so many different things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And can I just say? Ben did cook today yep. and clean. I just I'm gonna say he does do it because <laughs> I was at work today, so he did that. You know, it's yeah. not it's not like it never happens. But and I'm still... so really thankful. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes he just needs a nudge. He's just super oh. man. Ben, you really need to write in the comments what you're thankful for for Jay now. I think to yeah. And by the way, he's he's commenting. He's been using my device at home <laughs> so i am not commenting saying i'm thankful for this lady <laughs> the blonde lady that's not me it's him yeah. <laughs> oh i don't know guys what you thought of this video but my favorite well i have some favorites but no, some of them are so funny moms 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 <laughs> moms <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm so sorry to expose you right now, but this was just so funny. And actually, when I received, yeah, when I received the, the video, I asked him why the spin, and he said it was for a prop. <laughs> because it's like it was <laughs> I just found it so hilarious. But and I'm, I love, one. I'm thankful for mom. So yeah. It was a very good one. Yeah. Oh, I just, I mean, I love all the videos, but that one just really cracked yeah. me up, and the bills one as well. I'm thankful I don't have to work. Yeah, wow, man. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I, I mean, they're all really good, and I'm really, really happy. So, guys, keep keep bringing up in the comments the things that you're thankful for. Everyone can see it. I'll try and post them up if I see them, the things that you're thankful for. I'll post them up as well. Yeah. Right, let's go in the heart of the oh. subject and get some wisdom from this lady, Jay Aldous. So... Like we already said, you are a worship leader mm -hmm. at Bright City. You've been mm -hmm. here for how long? Let me see how Tw long. Time. 20 years. Almost as old as me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. She lies. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, so Jay is a face that you've probably seen a lot. If, you, if you're not new to ACF, Bright City, if you follow the other broadcast, uh, every two weeks she's on the worship um, on the Sunday Live. And actually, I had a question for you. Um, what is your worship song? Because obviously oh. she's worshiping. What is your worship song of the moment? Okay, well, for the, well, I found this song a year ago, and then I was having a discussion with Jade recently about about worship and um she, I, it, I just came to my mind again that song and so i started listening to it again and it's um magnify by eddie james jade if you can put it in the comments now, please this song you cannot listen to this song uh, in the background okay you can't listen to it quietly and yes you need you need you need headphones, headphones on you need yeah. it on loud because it <laughs> you need is the bass. it is masterful i mean and oh, if you yeah. can find the lyrics and read the lyrics as you go because it, the words are so quick, you will mm. miss what they're saying. Mm -hmm. But when you actually read along what they're saying, it is powerful. It is my war Magnificent. jam. Magnificent. <laughs> yeah, it is, it, yeah, it is my war jam. And oh, oh my goodness, it's just such clever writing and so anointed. So go listen to Magnify by Eddie James. It's such a great song. Actually, a year, she said that a year ago she discovered that song. And a year ago, around the same time, um, I was in hospital mm -hmm. for a few weeks. And then Jay was just my daily provider of worship. When I asked, oh, do you have any worship instrumentals? Do you have any worship to sleep with? And basically, any question about worship, uh, I went to ask her recommendation. And she gave me um, that song. And I was like, oh, it's so good. And yeah. then, I, like her, I forgot about it. And then when I asked her this week, oh, by the way, what's your song of the of the moment? She said, man, she's like, I love that yeah, song I've and back I've just it. been listening to it yeah. like on replay so just please I think um Jade just put the link yeah. just go put some headphones actually the version on Spotify is even better than the YouTube one so just like listen to mm. it mm. same question Joel what's your song of the moment yeah I do have one that very much at the moment because I found it what Sunday I think so yeah think Sunday but it's uh, Maverick City um I think it's just called Temple so mm -hmm. it's called like temple in brackets spontaneous um so i think it's part of their like spontaneous worship um it's a really great song but it's just the timing of it was crazy because we'd done the sunday service and mm -hmm. i was one of the bits i was speaking about is how we are now the temple of god and then i found this song and it was like wow it's literally exactly what we were speaking about and prior to that i've been chatting with you camille and saying 
for me, I think the type of worship I love the most is the ones that are just quite repetitive. I really love it just sometimes when, I don't know, you're in a worship and maybe like someone just feels the Spirit's mm. leading them just to sing a line. Mm. And then you get, it builds, it builds, and the whole church repeats it. I love it. And this temple song mm. is like that. They just, it's very to the point. Yeah. So it becomes it like a meditation, it. doesn't it? it yeah. You're really marinating yeah. those words and reflecting yeah. what they mean. Yeah. Definitely, it's actually a spontaneous it. song. Um, yeah. That temple song. I thought their stuff is, is it a lot of their stuff with spontaneous? Yeah, they have a the mix of, yeah. of it. Um, I mean, we're, you've probably heard Maverick City from our mouth of all of us so much because we're absolutely fans of Maverick City and they've released mm. this year, they've released like what, six, seven albums in one year, it's just, yeah. it's just crazy. They've got us through lockdown. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so they've got uh, two, three new albums within these last three weeks actually and the Christmas one. So just Whoa. go and, and listen to them and um, I believe that Jade put the uh, link to them yeah. as well. And there's one of your friend, Martin Pratt, that said, Joe, in the comments, um, which is really cool. Like, a, what is it? Oh, yeah. Childhood Martin. friend. If you're still logged in, Martin, great to see you. <laughs> great to see you, my friend. Um, my worship song of the moment, I've got so many. And I actually don't remember which one I said. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I know what, I know I've what it is. I've got so many. Tell I'll me. I'll give you a clue. Starts with an A. Last name W. Anita Wilson? Yes. I don't think that's the one I said to Jake to put up in the comments, but that song that you're speaking about, is it All About You? And it's just so good. good it's like, I listen to All About You and straight after I've got Magnified by AD Gems because they're just like, they're just yeah. so good. Yeah. Um, so Anita Wilson, All About You. And I actually can't remember so if, um, if Jake can put in... <laughs> Oh, this is so embarrassing. If Jade can put in the comments, the song that I actually gave her, because I don't remember it. This is the thing. I listen to so many you songs. Your moment just changes yeah. like this, doesn't it? Exactly. It's already gone. <laughs> Yesterday's news. But uh, So Jay will put in the comments. But guys, we've got a surprise for you. I don't know if any of you tuned in on Sunday Live uh, when um, we did the... Um, the Sunday life with Tanya, Joel and myself. Uh, and one of the tips I gave at the end of the challenges was um, to go back home and then just one of them was try to listen to one worship song a day and do it until the end of the year. And actually quite a lot of people came back to us and asked, oh, do you have any, any like worship songs I could listen to? I want to do the challenge, but I need like ideas and I need worship songs. So we decided with Unsubscribe to provide you with a playlist. Um, so the first one will come out on Sunday and this is a playlist to help you maybe discover or rediscover some mm -hmm. songs. And uh, there will be about 25, maybe a bit more of them um, in the playlist. So we will make it available for you. So watch out the social medias and the Sunday Life to give you the links. It's not, it's not ready just yet, but it's just as a heads up. And we actually have decided that we want to do that monthly. So mm. every month we want to give you uh, a playlist uh, with our favorites, favorites of the moment, uh, with different songs that we really like, some that might be linked to some of the subjects we're going to talk about. So we really hope that this, um, this will bless you and this will help you as well. Big time. I'm looking forward to looking at it myself. I think yeah. I'm going to find a lot of new songs. Yeah, That's how too, I found yeah. the Anita Wilson song. I don't know who she is. I'm looking forward to learning. Yeah, That's so Jade yeah. gave me that song to put in the playlist and I was like, oh my gosh, so good. So I'm listening to it all the time now. Um, so now I've got a few questions for you, Jay. Mm -hmm. One is, what, what is, um, is worship a vessel to give thanks to God. Is worship a vessel, vessel of gratitude <laughs> for you? No. No, 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 no. seriously. I, I would reverse it and I would say that gratitude is a vessel for me to worship. Mm. Because, um, like I say, wor worship is, is such a huge thing. And, um, and to give thanks is a part of worship, not the other way around. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that, 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 would be, that would be my answer to you. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Mm. I like that. It's a bit like what we saw in these examples in the Bible where people have used worship as an expression yeah. of their gratitude. Yeah. yeah. I mean, worship, it's, it's praise, it's thanksgiving, isn't it? It's adoration, you know, it's loud, it's quiet, it's so many things. And so I think gratitude goes mm. under the banner of worship rather than worship goes under the banner of gratitude. 
Yeah, yeah. I like that. So you you have used worship as a way sometimes to express that gratitude. Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah. All the time. And um I mean every time every time before we worship we would give thanks to God. We thank him. We thank you God for your presence. Thank you that you're already here amongst us as we worship, that you want to meet with us, mm -hmm. as we draw near to you, you draw near to us. Um, yeah, we thank you um, for the access to the Father, like I was saying earlier, and uh, we thank you that we can be together and join together mm -hmm. as one. Mm -hmm. and, um, and most of all, we're thanking him because, um, because of all that he's done for us and all that he continues to do for us, mm -hmm. us the continued grace that's poured out to us. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Do you think like thankfulness is a it has to come with a positive feeling because what i always wonder with the worship team is there's a lot of times i'll be in church and it's just been a bad week or there's stuff going on at home and mm. i can just sort of sit in the congregation and just be in my thoughts i don't have to be positive yeah but i always wonder like worship team you're humans as well yeah. you must have yeah. that and particularly a church our size you you guys are always yeah. on the stage so how do you deal with it when you maybe aren't feeling so thankful, but you're still going to lead worship. Sometimes uh, you don't feel like being there. Sometimes you don't <laughs> feel like opening your mouth. But you do it because sometimes it's a sacrifice of praise. You know, sometimes it's it's not for how I feel. It's nothing to do with me or what's going on internally. But ultimately, it's about God. Mm -hmm. So so whether I feel it or not, I'm going to choose to worship him. and I'm going to choose to be grateful mm. to him. And usually when you start saying thank you and expressing gratitude usually the positivity flows out of that and it comes from it yeah um so sometimes i mean thankfulness is such a it's such a powerful thing and it's so good for mental health as well especially when you reflect it to god who has blessed you with every single blessing that you would ever need um so yeah when you speak it you can't help but infuse that positivity and create a positive mind and um, be filled with joy ultimately, mm. and and you get a you get a sac satisfaction uh, from God when you say thankful because you realise actually everything that I have everything that I ever need is right here in front of me yeah. right now. He's yeah. already given it to mm. me. So why why should I be melancholy? Why should I be sad or, or downtrodden? You know when I've got everything. You know. So, yeah. 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 No, I really like that. And such good wisdom for all of us. Really, like, yeah. you don't have to be a worship leader. Mm. Sort of being in front of everyone to have to do that like it could be that you just wake up one day and you're thinking i'm just not feeling thankful but like mm. you say it's not so much a feeling led yeah thing but a, a choice definitely definitely um so yeah so you've said what you kind of touch on, on the subject but joe i'm interested as well to know um what is a vessel for you to express gratitude because you've said before worship's not really the thing that would come naturally in that the way that we see it mm. So do you have something else? Yeah, I mean, I guess one that might sound strange is sharing. Mm -hmm. Like for me, to be like sharing what I have, it makes me very thankful. Um, there was something I did last year. I was like trying to, before I turned 30, I wanted to post 30 oh, sort yeah. of things that I was thankful for. And like one of them was I'm thankful for my home. And my house and from since I can remember I always wanted to have a house that I could just welcome people to mm -hmm. and since I've come to Ashford there's I've like had no money I've lived in like really crazy situations like times where I couldn't afford to put electric on the meter and stuff like that and then when I look at my house now and you know it's miraculous even mm -hmm. how we got the house yeah. it's not yeah. not through any greatness of ourselves mm -hmm. it just makes me so thankful and to be able to share that with others like when we've had we've done life group in a house or we've just we try to always invite people over for dinner mm -hmm. or things like that it just having people share the things that i'm blessed with it makes me thankful and it reminds me that mm -hmm. i've been blessed with this it's not through anything that i'm amazing at it's not mm -hmm. like i can't tell you that i'm so great that i got this all for myself mm -hmm. It's a blessing and i think if i kept it all to myself i think it would probably start making me have a mindset a bit more selfish and thinking yeah it's mine to mm. keep and i kind of got this all for myself and yeah i don't want to open it up in case i lose it but just being open with what i have it reminds me that you know it's not mine 
to sort of mm. keep anyway. God bless me with this, and if I can use it mm. to help other people. A bit like Hannah. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, definitely. Hannah from the Bible. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> another level. Like, yeah, I know. Another no. <laughs> he is my son. <laughs> <laughs> my struggle, but... <laughs> but still, it's like um, uh, from a grateful heart becomes a generous heart, doesn't it? Because mm. mm. you realise that actually... Um, I haven't got this because I'm entitled to it. I got this because yeah. God was so kind to give it to me. So mm. how can I give so back? True. Yeah. And you often see it so many times that you always hear people say like, oh, like the people I know that are the most generous are the ones that on the surface they have nothing. And I think it's true. It comes from that. Like if you know, do you know where I came from? I almost started with nothing. Mm-hmm. So this is a blessing. Mm. Anything I have, even yeah. the small amount is a yeah. blessing. So who am I to not share that with anyone else that has mm-hmm. nothing at the same time definitely definitely how about for yourself well uh, i think both of the things you've said are definitely things that i use as well to express gratefulness but another way that i do it um is i love encouraging um i don't know i, I think it's i've always been like that but even more through some teachings that I've had about encouragement. And I remember years and years ago, I was a teenager and my pastor in Paris shared about, um, oh, well, I can't remember his name. It starts with a B, Barnabas or Barabbas. I never know which one is who. Uh, Barnabas, the one, yeah. not the one <laughs> that- for Barabbas, Barabbas is the criminal. <laughs> okay, so not him, so Barnabas. <laughs> Barnabas, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, Paul's, Paul's um, uh, helper. So, he was his name means the encourager and he was always encouraging people and when you read his story when you when you read about him he wasn't like like a great person in a worldly way like he accomplished so many great things and all that but he actually did by just encouraging people all the time he was always lifting other people and that's the mention of of who he is in the bible and even his name is reflected um through that and i i remember just from that moment and through all the things as well, always a bit like Joel said earlier, just I just want to be a vessel of encouragement for people. And there's times where it's I have to be very conscious of doing it. And there's times where it's just so natural, I would just I just do it all the time. And I think it's something that came with practice mm. um, as well, which is a good thing. And then it comes, it's always practice, but the more you do it, the more it's natural to you. A bit like the more you share, the more it's natural, the more you worship, the more mm. it's natural. Um, so yeah, one way for me is, is to encourage. Mm. And it's infectious, isn't it? Because mm. I think when you are around, I mean, I always say this is one of the big things I noticed when I was starting to be around Christians is that they were different to people that I knew not better as in like the people i knew were bad people but just they would do things that i wasn't so used to like just i think for me something that made it even more normal to open my house was everyone always opened their house to me Mm -hmm. and Mm. i say like when i moved to this town people let me live with them people would invite me around for dinner people would just call me up the people would just share their time with me and then it's infectious because then you think well if you did that for me then Much more than I, I want to do this for other people. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like with everything, people that are generous with money make you want to be generous mm. with money or people that are generous with their time make you want to be generous with mm. your time. So it's very infectious, I think. Yeah, definitely. So we kind of like touched on, on that through the discussion, but what does it actually mean for you, Jay, to have a grateful heart and to, to give thanks? What does it really mean to you? I think it's just it's just knowing, it's just... It's seeing all that you have and knowing that it is a blessing. And like I said before, it's not it's not because I deserve it, because I have I'm entitled to anything. It's just because um, I'm loved and God is so good mm-hmm. and He's so faithful and He wants to give good things to His children. And so I I just I try to recognise everything that He's given to me and um, and express the gratitude. Um, not necessarily with words, because like I said, words words sometimes aren't enough. Mm. You know, sometimes we just say thank you out of habit. Yeah. You know, but it's it's um it's treasuring what you have. You know, really treasuring it and looking after it and cultivating it. Like if you have a present, you know, and you just shoved it in a corner and forgot all about mm. it, I wouldn't think you were grateful for it. But if you took it out and you actually enjoyed it, like if you're a kid and you played with it as a toy, it would fulfill its purpose. So everything that God's given you has a purpose. Are you going to treasure it? Are you going to cultivate it? Are you, what are you going to do with it? Mm. You know, mm-hmm. so, yeah. Yeah, I really like that. I really like that. How about you, Joel? 
Yeah, could you repeat the question just so I know I'm definitely asking <laughs> the right The, the question right is, what does having a grateful heart or giving thanks mean? Mm. I think having a, like a, a grateful heart is similar to what you're saying, Jess. Just for me, remembering everything I have is like a blessing. Mm -hmm. And I think the way I remember it, I think to say it, it comes across negative but my mindset is not negative it's that i know i have nothing without god mm, yeah. like nothing i have is mine to, yeah. to hold on to and i think by worldly standards that sounds almost negative like i just go around like oh what's the point i don't own anything anyway i'm gonna die one day but <laughs> that's not how i feel it's a positive it's like yeah that's i'm not gonna be here forever mm. everything that's on this earth is not i didn't create this i didn't really do anything to deserve it or earn it so anything i've got is is a blessing like whether i'm in like a, a tiny one bed flat or i'm in a mansion or if i'm having to walk everywhere or i've got a car that i can afford whatever situation i'm in i'm thankful mm -hmm. like there's been times where i haven't had a car but i was thankful i could walk yeah and i mm -hmm. think for me something that i think helps even more for me to be thankful is thinking of there's always people that don't have what I have and when it becomes even more real when I there's so many times I think of my life and I think god why me because so mm. many people that came from similar situations to me or had similar experiences their life didn't end up how mine ended up so why me I seeing how, what could have happened it makes me think well definitely there's nothing special about me that that could have done it myself yeah. it's a blessing so mm. it just reminds me that i'm very thankful for everything mm, i have yeah yeah i'm um, just thinking about uh, uh, seeing you know what other people don't have and what you do have mm. and i was thinking about um we, we say grace at the dinner table as a family mm. when we sit down to eat um because because we want our children to appreciate what they actually have mm. now I, as i grow as, as a child i didn't come from a christian family but um but there was a sense of gratefulness with our meals because um, I don't know if your mum ever said this, but uh, she would say, if you don't want to eat it, why, why aren't you eating dinner? I don't like it, mummy. Don't you know that there are children starving in Africa? Did, yeah. you, did you ever get that? And that's because in 19... Mine was Kosovo. Yeah, well, in 1984, <laughs> we had the, um, uh, the, the famine in, was it Somalia? No, Ethiopia. Oh, yeah, yeah, we had the famine in Ethiopia. Exactly, when the Live Aid. Yeah, the Live Aid, the Band Aid happened. There was a lot of awareness, a lot of it on the news. And uh, us from what, from our comfy Western homes were introduced to this this horrible thing that was happening across the world. And uh, my mum would say that, not to guilt trip me into eating my dinner, but she would say that because uh, she wanted me to realise that what I have is... A blessing you know mm. not everybody has this you know we yeah. we my mom single mom four children council estate um and yet we are blessed you know with mm. this food eat your dinner you know so mm. so there's a sense of gratefulness just from that alone you know and and you've got to appreciate what you have mm. yeah so true i remember my nan used to say that to me who came here from africa and i was thinking like oh, I can't even argue with this. <laughs> she's, she's like saying it. I must yeah, be she's, yeah, she's, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's got the wisdom from yeah. it, the knowledge, the inside knowledge. Yeah, I think um, what's really interesting with what you've said about that's like, um, it comes from, from within is God gave us, Jesus when he left and, and went back to, to God, he said he sent us the helper, he sent us the Holy Spirit. And one thing that the holy spirit is is that he's the encourager and he's that thing within us that lives within us and that is constantly encouraging us and i just feel like i think that when we fully let the holy spirit leave what he's supposed to live within us that's just something that just becomes normal we mm. just one of the fruits of the spirit is to encourage and it, it's it's one of the things that just should translate out of us yeah. is to be people that encourage and people that are grateful and people that just bring this out and um so many times you would hear different christians say stories that that's happened to me where people that we've not said were christian to they'll come to say are you a christian by any chance because there's something different yeah, about yeah. you 
uh, or people will say, oh, you're always encouraging, you're different than the other people, blah, blah. And I think that's just something that we have to remind ourselves of is even if you think you struggle with encouragement and gratefulness and having that, that kind of hurt mm -hmm. is if the Holy Spirit lives within you, you've got it. You just need to embrace it yeah. and just need to maybe even pray, just say, all right, I don't know how, but just make it something of my life that is like I'm leaving it and not just something theoric, you know, mm -hmm. that you just know in theory, but you're not applying it. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, is there any ways that you apply apply like gratefulness in your heart that you leave it out? Yeah, well, like, like I said, it's it's showing that you appreciate what you've got by uh, looking after it, you mm -hmm. know, by protecting it. Um, Say so like um, the, the biggest one of all, you know, Jesus died on the cross yeah. for us, you know, so that we could be free, so that we could be forgiven, so that we don't have to die to have eternal life. Um, and... Um, and he's and he's given us his grace, mm -hmm. you know. And so, if we um, what was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> how do you apply? How to leave out? Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 So so, if knowing all this, you know, I'm a Christian, and I just continue in my sin, you know, what does that say about about how grateful I am to what he's mm. doing on the cross, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just making a mockery of it, you know. His, his grace is to help me live for him, mm. not to live so that I can do what I want mm. and be forgiven anyway, you know. So that's that that's uh, that's a huge example of yeah. how to apply um, what, what he's, you know, apply gratefulness. And so, yeah, if someone gives you something, you look after it, you treasure mm. it, you cultivate mm. it, and you use it for good. And that, that for me is the greatest way to show that you appreciate something, you know, that you're of your gratitude. So yeah. I like that. I feel like I've got nothing left to say. To <laughs> <laughs> um so in more practical ways, um, is there your parent? Oh yes. We're not. I am a parent. So is there any any ways that you try to to give that to show you that to your children, to your daughters? Is there any tips you could give? To parents. Well, no, there's the basics. Okay, let, let's go back to basics. When your children start speaking, they learn how to say please and thank you. Mm. You know, that's how it all begins. You know, yep. you need to teach them respect and manners and, and, to, and to be grateful for what they have. So we teach them please and thank you. You know, if it's just a little biscuit, what do you say? Not until they say please, they can they mm. have it. And not until they say thank you, will I let it go. You know, that, yeah. that, that's <laughs> basically what I, what I, that's the first steps of teaching them. Um, also, what we don't want to, uh, to do as parents is um, we don't want to bring up spoiled children. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to look at their child and think, oh, I dear, I think they might be a bit spoiled. Because spoiled means rotten, it means ruined. You know, you don't want a rotten, ruined, spoiled child who doesn't appreciate what they have. So what, what we do, or what, what we chose to do, is we don't, we don't buy them presents unless it's Christmas or, or their birthday. We just don't do it. They, that's, if they ask me, mummy, can I have a toy? We say, is it your birthday? Is it Christmas? Mm -hmm. Put it on your list because I just want them to appreciate when those special occasions come along. I want them to be extra special and for them to really appreciate what mm -hmm. they're given. But what we do allow them is um, we allow them to earn money. So they, okay. they do chores around the house and they get paid for it because from a young age we always said, where does money come from? And they would reply, the trees. The trees. <laughs> no. Where does money come from? It comes from work yeah it comes Labor. from work yeah. that's what me and daddy have to do we mm. work to get our money so you have to work to get your money um and that way they learn the value of of their of their possessions and also when i do give them a treat where they don't have to earn it but i've just given it to them out of the generous generosity of my own heart then they know that it's something to really appreciate because oh, i didn't have to work for this you mm. know and and oh, nothing brings me more joy than when Amy, who is a material girl, she's nearly 13, she loves shopping, okay? She, she, <laughs> it's she her therapy. Herself. She, she's her therapy. She's, on, she's online looking at things potentially that she could buy once she earns her pennies or that she can swindle out of me. Yeah. Oh, mommy, me this. <laughs> but what she does is um, just when I least expect it, she'll come up to me and she'll give me a hug and she'll say, thank you, mommy. And I know that she really means mm. it because of the embrace she gives me. So yeah, yeah. They're, they're, 
they're key things that we introduce to our children mm. to help them appreciate what they have and also saying grace at dinner time is really important yeah. you know you can't take the food in your belly for granted yeah no that's very so, yeah. true very true is there any tips Jill that you can I believe you went back home <laughs> to grab something that I forgot yeah, um, <laughs> and then I can go to get it ready <laughs> so I'll introduce it. Um, there's something that we we started doing a few years ago, and it's this book. I think Tanya kind of mentioned it a few weeks ago, because uh, she she saw it at the house. I mean, a lot of people when they come in our house, they see it. It's um, it's this book. We call it the Book of Blessings, mm. and it's full of blessings. We write actually. I'm a few weeks late. <laughs> yeah. I have to update it a little bit. But it's basically, you can show some pages, I think. Um, we we have this book at home that we display so that we remember there are blessings and remember to put them. But also, it's been so good because so many people, when they so come, they see and they're like... Random. I don't know if it's picking up everything, but there's bits all over the pages. Yeah. So. Uh, people see it and they're curious and they're thinking, what is that? And then... When they go through it, I don't see him in a lot of times, just come to the house and just went through it. There's different people. And it's basically when we we have something that God gave us and did for us and we don't want to forget, because it's so easy to forget. We write it down mm -hmm. in this book, the book of blessings. And sometimes it's small things. It could be, I don't know, thank God because I was late for work. This, I was going to be late and he woke me up on time. Or, oh yeah, because as I said before, um, I don't put alarms to wake up. Um, I ask the Holy Spirit every night before <laughs> sleeping yeah. to wake me up at a specific time the next day. Um, but that's something that I would write down because there's a few times in the last five years I've done that where I was like, oh, I'm late. But actually, I'm not late But because God still woke me up on time. And it's so, it sounds so small and minor, but I will write it down. Mm. Or bigger things when... Yeah, I, mean, I, can, I can read some out. Um, yeah. Because like I say, it's, the whole point of the book is writing down everything you're grateful for as best you can um you don't want to make it something that is unattainable like if you put too much pressure on yourself you're never going to do it and it will defeat your point but i love going in this book because every time i read it it just puts a smile on my face because no matter how much you think you remember the things you're thankful for mm -hmm. we don't we're human we forget or at best what i find is it's a hazy memory there's something about reading something literally in the words that it gives you more of an emotion. And it's biblical as well. It says so many times to write things down. And God's given commandments to write things down to not, to not forget. Yeah. So, I mean, the first one I wrote, there was a time I was driving home from work. I had zero petrol um, left in my car. It was quite a common occurrence <laughs> at the time. Um, but I managed to get all the way from Canterbury to Ashford without breaking down. And I filled mm -hmm. up. But I just remember I wrote this one because I specifically prayed at the time. And I was like, God, please. I, I can't remember the whole story, but I just know. I was thinking, this is going to mess me up big time if I break down right now. And I've had it before where I've broke down because I had no petrol. And then it screws up the car engine. But I made it. I made it back. Um, there's been times where we didn't have money to pay rent. Um, and then... I randomly got a load of money through some expenses. Mm. And again, I wrote down here, it was after we prayed. And I remember us like praying mm. and saying like, God, and I had a specific prayer. I was saying, God, I don't want to have to borrow money from anyone. Mm. And I don't want to mm. go into debt. Mm. Like, please don't let this happen. But your will be done. Mm. Out of the blue expenses came. And this has happened so many times. I've had, yeah. We've had like tax rebates or some money mm. comes. And I hear this is quite a common one for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I prayed specifically there's ones to do with like jobs that have come there's a mad one where there was a time um i'd taken canela and had no money in my account like we had nothing and um <laughs> and I, the table sweating. Yeah, I, knew, I, knew this, <laughs> I knew this for a fact i had just enough to do what we needed to do it was for our birthday but after that i was thinking i don't know how we're getting through the month i checked my balance something made me think check your balance and uh, there was just money in my account not even like you so and so has put this in or there was just money and to mm. this day there's no explanation and uh, trust me definitely i had no money because yeah. it's just there's no way that um i messed that up so just so many things and i mean even like to the more sort of significant things if you like where canal was in hospital and then I've, i wrote down here that she randomly was seen by 
um, a doctor who had come to our life group uh, for the first time the previous week before. And he'd just randomly come to our house. And, and him and me met for like two seconds. Yeah, two seconds. And, and basically, Canel had been waiting for, I think, like almost 24 hours in A&E to get a bed, got a bed, and she just wasn't getting the treatment. I was really um, like regressing and doing badly. And then this doctor just happened to walk past and just be like, pop his head around and be like, Canel, I know you. I was at your house last week and started talking. And basically, long story short, said, you know what? Let me sort this for you. And he went off chased everyone up, got the consultants Amazing. in, cool. and everything got sorted. And Canel knew what medicine she needed, but she, she didn't have a voice, as in she could literally speak, but no one was listening to mm. her. That's how it felt. And then this doctor just said, no, I'll take care of it for you. Yeah. But it was just miraculous how we didn't even know him prior to the previous mm-hmm. week, and he just turned up at our house. And I don't think I've ever seen him back at the church. Uh, Dr. Toba, if you're watching, yeah, yeah you're in the book of blessings. Yeah. So many people make it in this book, and yeah, I'll say it again, that I'll say this all the time. Do something like this. Um, I wanted it to be a big book because I knew there's so much I'm thankful mm-hmm. for. Whatever works for you, but yeah. the bit I swear by is write it down. Don't don't go away and think, oh yeah, that's a good point, Joe. I'm oh, gonna yeah, I'm gonna make a list in my mind of what I'm thankful for because it's not the same, yeah. and this it's not just about writing what you're thankful for use it as well there's so many times like where i'll just be on a downer or i'm just not feeling great or it might be a tough month or something and i literally now i'm in the habit of thinking i'm just going to the book yeah <laughs> i read the book i get to literally page one and i'm smiling mm-hmm. and then i read the other pages and i'm on top of the world by the end of it that's because amazing. there's just so much to be to be thankful for i think that's a good thing to do in the book of blessings maybe even like with with your children and mm. try to give them a habit yeah that's a really good idea down. Yeah. you two have got this gratitude thing down i, tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what we wanted to talk yeah, about yeah, yeah. yeah it's amazing so i will my tip would be get one of those notebooks and get in the habit of daily writing the things you're thankful for even on days where you think oh there's literally nothing the fact that you're thinking the fact that you're breathing the fact that you're still safe yeah, there's I mean, always there's, something to be thankful yeah. for you're yeah. going to bed next to your spouse or with your children in the house or with a roof over your head or you had food like there's just so many things that sometimes it doesn't have to be those crazy stories that we hear every now and then <laughs> sometimes even just breathing is a crazy story yeah. mm. you should be thankful for the small things as well exactly as the big, yeah. Yeah. big yeah. and small yeah. and just to finally add to it is that again another benefit of this is a lot of times what happens is the things that we were once thankful for mm. are the things we start cursing in the future yeah and you forget that that was something oh, you prayed true. for and when you see it like and this isn't to condemn people because we've all been there but how many times is it one year god please 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 i need a job i don't have any work and then the next year oh i hate my job i hate my <laughs> colleagues oh why have i got to get up at this time uh, yeah but you you go back and you read and you're like yeah. how can i be moaning I, mm, yeah i forgot there was a time where i was just just to have a paycheck yeah. was a blessing yeah. so how can i complain yeah. and you go in with a different attitude you're more positive i find the more thankful you are i believe everyone has opportunities i don't believe this thing called luck mm. just affects some people and affects mm. others mm-hmm. And I mean, luck, I, I would say, is blessings everywhere. I don't yeah. think it's yeah. luck. Yeah, definitely. But I think some people get into the mindset of like, why are some people more blessed than others? Mm. That I truly believe that for the most part, we all are blessed in so many ways, but mm. some people recognise it more than mm. others. Some people focus on on the blessings and some people focus on the things that you don't have. Mm. And I think that's so important. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think about a, a year ago, I, w- I work at Sainsbury's, by the way, and I had I was I was working my job, but I didn't have enough hours. I had twelve hours a week, and I wanted more hours, so I was looking for other work, and I, I couldn't find it. And um, and I was actually getting really down, failing interviews, mm. and you know just thinking, where is this going? All I want to do is earn a bit more money. That's all I want to do. And um, lockdown happened and I got given all these hours and now I'm working practically full time and I've, I'm in the same job but now I'm just thankful I'm so thankful for yeah. work so thankful and uh, you know and just and that, I remember that, that and, yeah. you had applied for a specific place yeah and then when, and oh, you, so you, felt you were absolutely going to get it and then yeah. you didn't get it and yeah. you were so done for and weeks I was like, why didn't I get it I was more than qualified How, what, what, 
all yeah. of this going on. And then, like, a couple of weeks later, lockdown happened, the place shut down. And St. Spruce didn't. And St. Spruce stayed open. Mm. And you're now a key worker. <laughs> yeah, I'm a key worker. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's so, so important. So, I think these are all things that so you can help us set the standard as Christians. Yeah. Because Thanksgiving is something that's very Christian. Before we started late, um, Jay was actually talking about the fact that the world has just taken back the idea of gratefulness oh, yeah, and thanksgiving yeah, yeah and and you were saying that yes yeah, so many people are, are saying it's it's good for mental health oh, and it's being and, it mm. and it's all true things but <laughs> i find that we hear about gratefulness and and all these things more outside of the church mm. than in the church but it's it's a biblical principle it is yeah. it, it is. is biblical it's from god and he's created us like that but we as Christians need to set the standard. We as Christians need to own it back. Yeah. And not just leave it for the world and, mm. and go get our inspiration or our tips and advice from the world. Mm. But within the church, and we are the church, the church is not just your pastor. And it's not because we're in lockdown, we can't see people that, oh, well, I can't get it from the church. You are the church. Mm, yes, yes. <laughs> so just own it and, and start making the changes. You'll see the change within you. Your family, mm. your marriage, your children, your colleagues, your your household, mm. everything mm. around you. And I truly believe that as Christians, when we set the standard, it's just really powerful. Yeah, yeah. I'm and I think it's it's like rooted in something more. Because mm. I think like you're saying, like it's not that getting gratefulness from a quote is a bad thing. Yeah. But how long does it really last for? Yeah. Do you even remember what the quote was the following week? Mm. But what God gives you is something so much greater yeah, it's like mm-hmm. it's, it's mm. deep and it goes beyond feelings which i think is it's a key tangible, thing isn't it it's real yeah thing. yeah and like you were saying like with the worship example it's it's beyond even like oh well i feel grateful today so now i'm going to give my thanks mm-hmm. it's like even in my darkest moments god can help me to give thanks and that's what i think is different from a lot of the time what we see in the world mm. a lot of the time like I say all the time, even about love, the world teaches love and it teaches some good principles. But for me, I find a lot of it's based on feelings mm-hmm. and especially like the Hollywood movies and everything. It's mm-hmm. just like you're looking for that person that's going to make mm-hmm. you feel so special and you, and that person's looking from it from yeah. you. But it's ultimately at its core, it's like a taking <clears throat> philosophy, whereas God flips it and is like, love is what you give. Yeah. It's what yes. you can yeah. give out. This is what mm-hmm. I gave to you. Now you go and give it out. And yeah. It worked like in a marriage, if two people are giving to each other, You're it's more solid love than if mm-hmm. both people are trying to take mm-hmm. from each other. And I think with thankfulness, the same thing. Mm-hmm. What we have is like so, it's just rooted on something I find more solid mm-hmm. so that you can even be thankful when you're not feeling thankful. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. You wanted to say something? I can't remember now. Oh, sorry, sorry. I was <laughs> so absorbed in what you were saying, Joe. It's good stuff. <laughs> well, if you want some um, truth and principles from the Bible, I've got I've got one here. Uh, Jade put one t- uh, earlier from one Thessalonians. Thess- Thessalonians. Is it five sixteen to eighteen? Yes, that's what I had. Say it. Take it away. <laughs> Say it. Always be joyful. This is from the New uh, New Living Translation. Always be joyful. Keep on praying. No matter what happens, always be thankful. For this is God's will for you who belongs to Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. I've got one here from Psalm. Actually, literally what I encourage you to do is just go on Google and just type Thanksgiving in the Bible. Verses about gratitude in the Bible. And you'll get a whole list. Mm. Go through the list and just and just apply it to your life and just say it. It's all over the Bible. And in Psalms, you've got so many. One of them is psalm 9 verse 1 2 that says i will praise you lord with all my heart i will tell of all the marvelous things you have done i will be filled with joy because of you i will sing praises to your name O most high Mm -hmm. and it's exactly what we've talked about Mm -hmm. this whole evening is it's not about the feelings it's not about us it's about god and just praise the lord give him things Mm -hmm. it's so intertwined like giving things worshiping god and and praising him so this is coming up to the end of the broadcast we've gone over one hour but i think it was necessary <laughs> we've got some good gems that's the time going <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> um so yeah remember the tips get a book of blessings 
apply the parenthood tips that Jace talked about, um, get one of those notebooks. And what we've done as well, we when we were leading a life group, we had a book of blessings for the life group. So if you have a life group, there's a great things to do together. Even before we had the book of blessings, we had a jar and every time we met, um, people had to write three things they were grateful for for this week. The attitude of gratitude. Yeah, nice. That's how we we <laughs> named it. And one of them out of the three always had to be a simple thing like, I'm grateful for the sun. I'm grateful because I can breathe. Just to always keep you gran- grounded. Mm-hmm. And that's such a great thing to do as a life group because we, we actually still have it at home. But when you go back through it as like the different life group members, you just remember the things that God has done. And then we, because in the life group setting, we pray for each other and we encourage each other, it's good to then give the feedback of what happened after we've prayed. I know in our life group, because we've got one with the worship, we often ask, oh, so what happened after then? Yeah, and, yeah, we um, want to know. Even recently, yeah. Paula has had some um, some things that she's she's come up to us for with, and then we've prayed for it, and then she's come back to us a few weeks later and said, mm. thank you, guys, oh, thank yeah, you, God, yeah. because God has answered the prayers that you've prayed, and these are all things that we can write in the Book of Blessings, so we actually might have to yeah. do one for our life yeah, group. Yeah, that'd but, be great. Uh, anyone that has a life group, that's a great thing to do in the group, within a, a family as well. Um, so, yeah. This is coming up to the end. Um, a few announcements. So next week will be Tanya leading us mm-hmm. into part two of mental health. So a oh, few yeah. weeks ago, mm. she did mental health with her, with her friend Nikki, the therapist. And and they can talk a bit about gratefulness. Because exactly. it's great for mental yes. health. It's still linked. <laughs> Every episode is linked. It's just meant to be. Yeah. Uh, we don't even talk to each other first when we yeah. choose the yeah. topic. And Jesus somehow knows. it's just linked. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so Tanya will lead us into mental health part two. So if you were interested, I believe that we will talk about the questions that had been asked that we had, hadn't been answered before. Yeah, the questions that we weren't able to see, we'll go back through and see if we can pick yeah. them out. And if you have more questions during the week, uh, there's lots of ways to reach out to us. We've got the social media at unsubscribe underscore Bright City Church on uh, Instagram, on Facebook. Uh, you can see in the comments, it's been uh, posted by unsubscribe. Uh, you can even message the Bright City Church if you can't find us. And then if you have any questions or if you know us personally, just send us the questions because we'll be more than pleased to answer them. Um, and also, don't forget that the unsubscribe Spotify playlist is coming soon. So anyone that has any recommendations as well, feel free to send them our way. Even if we don't put them in, in this first playlist, uh, we want to do one monthly. Mm. So we'll send out the links on all social medias and on the Sunday Live as well uh, with Pastors Ian and Rachel. So we're very excited about that. Actually, I'm excited <laughs> about this yeah, playlist. So yeah. Thank you guys for staying. Thank you, Jay, for joining Thank us. Thank you so much yes, for having you. me. It's been such a pleasure. I'm so happy that you came. Yeah. She was supposed to be on Skype and then we just decided last minute. We had minute. connection problems. Yeah, because she, she had issues. So we just like, just come. And, yeah. and yeah. I'm really yeah. happy that you were there. Yeah, Thank you so much. Thank you, Joe, for coming back from, from the house and bringing the the book of blessings the world gets to see it now yeah and thank you for joining us thank you guys we love you see you next week for unsubscribe episode 11 Bye. bye see ya